Good morning, Mr. Gartz. Good morning. Uh, we are at SPS Italia in the Industry 4.0 at the Panasonic booth. Could you tell us a little bit how Panasonic and what sensors or how the com what the company brings here? Yeah, uh, so buongiorno from my side. <laughs> we are very happy to be here uh, at the SPS Italia. I think it's the uh, 10th or the 15th time that uh, Panasonic is uh, exhibiting here in Italy and it's always a pleasure for us. So uh, we are in the area of factory automation and we are one of the uh, manufacturers with a very wide portfolio. So our products uh, are for example industrial sensors, servo drives and uh, also controls, means uh, PLCs, networking and uh, additionally to this uh, we also offer laser marking systems for the industry. Oh. So, uh, maybe you know Panasonic is a Japanese company, but uh, we are very global, so we have offices all over the world. Uh, we are here in charge for the European Panasonic industry products, and we have 12 offices in Europe. One of the uh, main offices is Italy, this is very important for us. This is the reason why we exhibit here. Our vision are high-tech products, so very innovative products. We also, as Panasonic Global, we invest a lot of money in R&D, uh, uh, roughly 6%. Um, what we do so means uh, we have uh, leading edge uh, products, especially in sensors or in servo drives. And uh, for example, our servo drives are very accurate. They are very small and uh, the customers love to use our products. Uh, I know that one very uh, high topic at Industry 4.0 uh, and today is sus sustainability. Uh, do you think Panasonic is following the trends? Absolutely, absolutely. So we have there a presentation of uh, data analysis together with a partner, big data, which we are using uh, here for a statistic, but you can use it also in industry production. And uh, this is what we are doing. Furthermore, um, our systems are based on uh, cloud services. We are also offering together with, an, uh, with a partner, a cloud solution to our customers. So I can see that you have the sensors, you have also the cloud computing, and you have all the, also the AI, I understand? Uh, AI in future, so uh, yeah, it will be very soon, um, but we don't show it here, we will show it later. Uh, one of our topics is that we don't offer only devices, so means we offer solutions to our customers. Together we combine all our products, means the sensors, the controls and the servo drives. And this uh, we also uh, give to our cloud services. So means we can offer the whole solution to our customers. I'm pleased to introduce uh, Mr. Philip Sebisch. Philip Sebisch is a dedicated product manager for our motion uh, devices and he will explain you our latest development and the latest products here, which we show in Italy. So, please, Philip, it's your Thank turn. Thank you, Michael. Yes, good morning. We're here on the SPS Fair in Parma, and I'm pleased to show you our latest um, servo drive of the Minas A6 family. It's called Minas A6 VU. It's an EtherCAD drive, and the special feature, as you can see here, it's a, we call it gap control. So usually you need an analog sensor to measure a distance, then you need the analog inputs, and the analog inputs are processed in the CPU, the CPU sends the signals to the drive, and the drive then makes the movement. And in our newest generation of the Minas A6 family, we can connect the analog um, sensor directly with our servo drive which means we, we save up to 20% of, of time and the movement is even better. So we, ha we have the motor position and the deviation, of course, in, in mini, uh, millivolts. Oh, okay. As the, it's an analog sensor sending uh, analog inputs and these analog inputs are made into a movement. And this movement is exactly the shape of the, the contour. All right. Some applications uh, you need a defined gap. For the, for example, for a processing head like a laser, if you want to cut something with a laser, you have the defined height of the laser where right. it has the most precise point to mm -hmm. the working point. You can use it for any cutting application. 
for gluing applications, for example, if you want to measure the height of the glue. And if you, you have to um, adapt the speed of the movement, and then you can measure the height of the glue, and if, it, if it, uh, the glue is too thick, mm -hmm. then you're too slow. If it's too less, you're too, too fast. So you can, right. you can measure the glue on the, on the surface, and not the movement of the process itself, but really the glue, because you want to glue. Right. On, on a process, and you want to have the glue in a certain thickness, and on the whole surface, the same thickness. Okay, so this system is uh, much more precise, it's much more fluent, and it's much faster, right? Perfectly on point, yes. All right. Yes. And, uh, and you save analog inputs on the on PLC side. Yeah. So it also save, save uh, components. Um, we have built this demo case in collaboration with Zena Drive. Zena Drive is a linear motor supplier. So the, the linear axis is a linear motor built by Zena Drive, and our component is only the servo drive. We, we have servo drives for our own rotary motors, which makes the rotary movement, but also linear movement. Mm -hmm. We do not have own linear motors, that's, um, that's why um, we rely on partners in, in whole Europe, but we can also move these linear motors very precise, as you know from the standard A6 um, portfolio. And in this case, we also have a different partner, it's uh, uh, text automation, with, which is doing the the whole uh, motion control. So this is really a linear motor moved by magnets. Magnets? Yeah. Okay. Compared to a normal mechanic where you have a belt drive, for example, mm -hmm. this is way more stiff, way more precise, way faster, but also more expensive. Here, uh, especially in the Italian market, here are a lot of textile companies and um, our local sales guys from, from Italy, they understood their market, they know their customers, and they show here some application examples from our real customers. For example, a sewing machine, you know, all, all our clothes needs to be sewed, if it's a jeans or a shoe, and this has to be very precise, and we have here some, some features why our products fit perfectly into this industry. And here, for example, a simple gear, uh, here we have a master access, it's, uh, really good shown here. We have a speed controller. The speed is checked by the master axis. There's an encoder. Uh, it sends the master speed to the motion controller, and the motion controller can then do the synchronized movement. Okay. Like here, for example, you have the gear, which mm -hmm. is a certified ratio. If you speed up, it's faster, of course. All right. At the same time, I do it a little bit slower that we can see it. Here you have a cam pattern. It makes a round movement into a certain shape. Uh -huh. uh, may maybe, you know, in, in former times, all these cam patterns needed to be done in a mechanical you design. You had to shape it, exactly, right. Exactly, okay. exactly. Now we can do it electronically. Wow. And additionally, there is a rotary knife. Let me check if it works. It should, hopefully. Now, the, this uh, arrow is synchronizing with this arrow. Mm -hmm. So the, the rotary knife application fits perfectly in, in these industries. Especially for textile, if you have to cut, then move to a certain speed. If you adjust the speed, of course, all the other cam, rotary knife, gear, they have to adjust to the master speed. Okay, so we've seen maybe metallurgical, automation, also textile, uh, anywhere else that we can find Panasonic uh, devices, products? All industries. <laughs> Everywhere? Everywhere, yes. Okay, yes. Uh, thank you, Philip. Thank you. Uh, it was my pleasure. I'd like to introduce my colleague, Patrick Losch who is the responsible um, head of product management for our sensing products. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I will show you a bit what we have about sensors. We have basically over 2,000 uh, different kinds of sensors, and I will show you three, the three interesting or important ones. And one is, this one is a safety light curtain. It protects people for accidents if the machine is kind of a risk to cut the hand or the finger. So this demonstrates 
a machine, the ventilator, and as soon as you put your hand in, the machine stops immediately in a delay of some microseconds or milliseconds. So we have different kinds of very short ones and up to two meter long, depending the size of the machine. Why would we like to have open windows like this and not just close the machine? Ah, this is because the operator needs to place an object. If you have a press who produce cars, or not cars, produce uh, the door, the metal part, you have a metal sheet, you place it in, mm -hmm. ah. and then he puts his hand out and starts the machine, the press. And while the press goes down, you should not put your hand in. So during this time, the light curtain is active and assures that uh, there is no hand cut off. This is the same thing, light curtain, just different kinds of, and a controller who controls the whole thing. And this next one are the miniaturized sensors. So here, for machines, machines have to be always very small. As smaller, as less space they need in a production line. So these are different kinds of, there are a couple of hundreds different, we just show five. And depending the application, you can use something like this for long distance, something like this here to see even the pin of a needle to detect if there is a needle on a syringes or not. Right. So this has to be checked in the production line. Or if you have something like this, are used in, in uh, coffee machines, for example, or in, in any machine, you have little sensors that detect the position of a, of a bra or something. Mm -hmm. And sorry, so I can see that they are not perfectly aligned. Yeah. Like this, like one. this one. Yeah, we do it voluntary because so the customer can see it's easy to install. You just screw it and it will work, even if it's not in perfect aligned. That's important in some applications. Well, and these are, we call it binary sensors. It send only yes, there's an object, or no, there's no object. So only yes or no. Okay. But we have also analog sensors. This is an analog sensor who gives a digital signal, means a, a value. So he measures, for example, the thickness of this paper. As soon as you put it down, it indicates here how many micrometers is the size of this one. And it works up to 600 millimeters of distance. Okay. So that's the one who has a high resolution in micrometer. And we have something similar who works up to three meter height, which is here, <laughs> you see it on the top. So this one can measure the height of an object independent of the color. That's important. That's why we have three different caps. So if you put it on, All right. maybe you want for you, uh. and you place your body here, then we can see your height is 179. Wow, it's correct. And if you use this one, it should be the same value because the sensor measures the height independent of the color. 178. Okay. <laughs> you, well, maybe I, now okay. it's correct. <laughs> okay. So that's uh, also a laser sensor, but he measures with another technology. But anyway, here the, the resolution is about a millimeter. Wow. Yeah. In for three meters, one millimeter resolution. Yeah, about, yes. Oh, no, one centimeter, I think. Because we want to show that we cooperate with other companies, though the two values, height, and shoe size is sent to a software where he calculates the relation between height and shoe size. And there should be a certain relation. If it, the value is not correct, he can give an alarm or something. But this is just an example. In a machine, you need it, for example, when you make uh, produce something, there should be also a relation between two things. And he can then make certain calculation to right. evaluate if there's a problem coming or not. Of course, cross uh, parameters. Yeah, cross control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, Patrick. Thank you very much for You're the welcome. interview. Okay. Uh, it was my pleasure. Okay. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.